Well, we've got the perfect person to join us today then to talk about this. He played the last time the USA were at the World Cup. Demarcus Beasley is joining us. Welcome, Demarcus. Thanks so much for your time. Firstly, how are things in Houston, mate? You've been very busy there with the World Cup bid, and we're all keeping a close eye on that. But how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. First off, I heard I'm I'm the first guy on the show. I'm the first one on the show. Yeah. Uh, I'm, honored. I'm honored. No, I'm honored. I'm honored that, <laughs> that you guys chose me to be the first guy on the show. So thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you guys letting me join you guys uh, today. So No, it's just brilliant. We've been looking forward to this for so long, Demarcus. So, I mean, again, I could list off all of the stats, seventh all time for appearances for the oh, US no, we, uh, we don't even have time goals. I mean, does that get boring? Because for me, that would never get boring if I was. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say boring, but you know, um, it's cool. You know, obviously, when you're when you leave the game, you reflect a little bit more of you know what you did in your career. And you know, to, to be honest, when I when I did retire, um, a lot of it I didn't even remember. You know, they were people were telling me things that I did, and I I had no idea. Uh, so it's good to reminisce and to reflect, um, you know, on your career after you stop playing. And, you know, hopefully now that, you know, I can make new memories. Yeah, I, I was thinking the other day, DeMarcus, as we were prepping for this about, you know, when you came into everybody's kind of collective consciousness back in the 2002 World Cup and burst onto the scene with that team and that run in that tournament. And it dawned on me, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> One, when did we get so old? And, and two, like, you know, what 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 do you remember now? that you have 20 more years of life experience and a whole entire career, you know, that you played out afterwards that really sticks out to you from that time of your life. Oh man. The, I mean, that first game was, uh, was incredible. You know, um, for me being the, the youngest guy on the team, uh, not, I was kind of on the bubble with the national team and, and, you know, at that, at that age. Um, uh, but I had a really good, um, uh, gold cup that year and just kind of, you know, went on form. And um, yeah, I, I remember pretty much everything <laughs> in 2002. You did say it's 20 years ago, but you know, you don't forget the World Cup. You don't forget little things that happened. I still remember the, the trips we took, you know, um, through um, uh, South Africa, uh, excuse me, South Korea. Uh, you know, my room, my roommate Landon Donovan, um, you know, we had time off. We, we got to, you know, see the city a bit. So, uh, so it wasn't just about the, you know, about football and, 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 the, and the matches. Obviously, that was a hugely important part of it. But, um, you know, you, you get to see a little bit of, you know, the culture that you're in. Um, and that's why, you know, for me, you know, living in now, living in Houston, uh, we fast forward 20 years and, you know, I'm in Houston and, you know, being a part of this bid, um, a part of the World Cup committee bid um, in 2026 for Houston is is incredible. You know, I, I got a chance to play in it. Now I'm on the other side um, trying to, um, you know, do what I can to help uh, Houston uh, get a bid for the for the World Cup match because it, it'll be huge for the city. It'll be huge um, uh, for soccer in general. And I just think for all the fans involved. So how's that going then, Demarcus? Can you tell us about that? Because you're, you're on the board of directors. That there's, there's a decision we expect in the next few months on the 10 host cities in the US. Uh, there's been visits by FIFA. So there's a lot going on. You're a busy man there in Houston. How has it been for you? What's, what's the situation in Houston right now with the 2026 World Cup bid? Yeah, it's been great. It's really, it really has. Um, you know, I'm one of the, uh, the, uh, I'm on the board uh, of the committee and, you know, the first, the first time Chris Kennedy, the, the president of the Houston World Cup uh, committee board called me and said, Hey, we would like you to be a part of the committee. And I was like, okay, but what does that, what does that really mean? <laughs> you know? Um, and, but no, you know, Houston has given me so much um, this last uh, eight years. Obviously I played five years um with the well five and a half years with the, with the dynamo but uh houston has grown on me you know the city is is vibrant is is diverse the the culture is you know it, it believe it really does believe football you know if you look at any of the matches that uh that have been played here international matches they're always a sellout you know the the, the crowd is electric you know so for me any way i can to help um you know get us a a world cup get the world cup here in houston uh, I'm I'm happy to do so. Whatever that is, uh, that's you know sitting here talking to you guys or <laughs> or anything of that nature. Uh, I'm I'm willing to help, and, and Chris knows that you know. So I'm really really honored to be a part of the uh, World Cup Committee bid. It's a Marcus. You've been played at a number of huge places, but what occurs to me is you were kind of close to home, right? You're from Fort Wayne, Chicago, close enough to home when you when you play there. By the time you come back, having stopped in Glasgow and Manchester and all these places, and and now you're in Houston, so that experience had to frame how not how, just how far MLS had come, 
but what being in a club had been. So what can you tell us about the impression that Houston made after being where you had been? I, I, I mean, since the, since the first day, and this is honestly, honestly, honest, honest, uh, um, since the first day I got to Houston, the hospitality of everyone was incredible. Um, not from my teammates, but from everyone, you know, just the city, um, everyone involved, um, you know, trying to get me and trying to get me as comfortable as I could. And, um, and really, um, you know, engulfed in, in, um, in the culture and, and engulfed in the city. That was one thing about me throughout my whole career. Um, when I was in Germany and Scotland and wherever I was, Holland, I wasn't, I'm not a sightsee guy. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a big site. I don't really kind of go around, just go look at sites, take pictures. I like to just sit in cafes and people watch, you know, I like to, you know, engulf what's, what's the best thing that, you know, the, the culture is in that place I, I'm at. So that's, you know, what I did in Houston, you know, I, I love being, I love being out and about the, I, I, the food here is incredible. So I, I love going to, uh, to different restaurants, but, um, but Houston as a city, um, you know, even without the, the football part, it's, it's just, it's, it's like, it feels like a home because everyone helps out. Everyone, you know, it's kind of like a small, big city because everyone knows everybody, <laughs> you know, so he's <laughs> is, is, is home now. You know, I, I really enjoy being here. Uh, I enjoy my time. And you look at from, you know, Fort Wayne coming to, and then now coming to, to Houston, you know, we look at it as a, in a football way, um, you know, what they've done, you know, here, uh, what they've built is, is truly remarkable. Um, I think just because of, you know, the, 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 the team has been successful, you know, a lot of it in the past, but now I think with the new ownership group and, you know, a couple of new signings they've had, um, I think they're getting back on, on track of what they've, what they've built um, in 2005 and six. And, you know, uh, I was happy to be a part of it for six, six years. Um, this is, like I said, this is home now. And I'm, you know, I think Houston is a perfect place uh, to, to host world cup matches. DeMarcus, we're almost four years now into the head coaching tenure of, uh, and, and I was reminded of this this week as well, a teammate of yours from the 20, uh, from the 2002 World Cup, Greg Berhalter, as head coach of the U.S. Men's National Team. How do you kind of see, I guess, the program and where it is right now? Obviously, you were pretty up close and personal in 2017 when what happened happened, <laughs> and it was time for a bit of a revolution or, or, or a changing of guard, a changing of ideas. You know, where do you see this team is at going into these final three games, hopefully the World Cup later this year? And and kind of, I guess, what is your uh, what, what's your overall hope for what this team could do in 2022? Yeah, my, my first of all, I think it was it was the right thing to do um, to, to change the whole change, the not the program, but move in a different direction. You know, I think it was it was it was time for older statesmen like myself because I was the yeah, I was on the bench uh, in 2017 when we lost to Trinidad in Trinidad. Uh, I think it was the right thing to do. I think it was time to um, you know inject some new blood into the system. Um, uh, I think uh, right now I think Greg is is a is the right man for the job. Um, you see in different in different parts of uh, of games. Um, you know, his style, his philosophy, you know, it, it shows and it comes out. Obviously, as a as a fan, I'm, I'm a fan just like you guys. As a fan, do I want to see that more and, you know, sustain yeah. it for more and more time? Of course. But it, it's football. And it's going to take time. You know, a lot of these players, um, we keep saying they are young. Um, but, you know, it's one thing playing, you know, in, in Chelsea and Barcelona. But, you know, when you come to the national team, it's, it's, it's different. And they're going to have they're going to take time. It's going to take time them getting used to. And I think they've, they've done a tremendous job um, getting getting this far. Um, I mean, they're right at the cusp of qualifying for the for the World Cup. And, you know, I, I support them 100 um, percent. You know, I hope in my lifetime one day I can see the U.S. men's national team win a, win a World Cup like our yeah. like our women do. <laughs> um, but, yeah. you know, I, I think another thing I think how great would it be if the Houston could host the U.S. men's national team here in Houston uh, for a World Cup match. Sure. That would be, you know, incredible for me, for my family. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that right now I think Greg is the right man for the job and, you know, the team is moving in the right direction. And, DeMarcus, you mentioned there about hosting the U.S. in Houston. What do you think are some of the advantages it perhaps has over the competitors for uh, other cities bidding for games? Because you look at NRG Stadium obviously has a roof that's we all know in the US in the summertime with storms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good advantage to have that time of year. And also just the, the soccer culture. Can you maybe pitch to us if we're FIFA and we want to come to games? Get 30 seconds. Why should Houston have 
World Cup games and what advantage does it have? Oh man, thirty seconds. All right. Um, <laughs> <on the call. laughs> no, I, I literally, I think you know, as, as soon as you walk, this, this is what I said before. As soon as you walk in and get off the the airport I, in in Houston, um, you know, from the transportation from the airport to the hotel, hotel to the stadium. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's world class, you know, and I think the accommodations that we, we have in, in Houston um, is, is, is second to none. You know, you look at um, the international matches that have been played here, um, the, 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 the vibrance of the stadium, the, the people, the culture. I mean, we actually we bleed uh, football in this city. And I think anyone will see that and anyone will walk away from World Cup matches in Houston thinking that this was the best atmosphere I've, I've ever been in. Wow. You've sold me. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's big things going on. Obviously, Hector Herrera coming in, Houston Dynamo. It, it seems like just a great time for soccer in Houston. So we wish you the best of luck with that. That's going to be an incredible experience. And we all got your thing, our fingers crossed for you, Demarcus. On oh, that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.